So naming alkanes can sometimes be complicated. So let's look at a few important rules that we have to keep in mind whenever we're naming alkanes. Rule number one, find the longest straight chain of carbons. So to demonstrate this rule, let's look at a few examples. So let's create an alkane and then let's try to find the longest straight chain of carbons on that alkane. So let's suppose we have an alkane that looks like um, that, okay? So we want to find the longest straight chain of carbons. So let's begin counting our carbons. So one carbon, two carbon, three carbon. Now, since we want to find the longest straight chain of carbons, we have to choose in which direction we want to go to find that longest straight chain. Well, if we choose this way, we get four. If we choose this way, we get five. So we go this way, four and five. So this is the longest straight chain of carbons, and this is called the carbon backbone. And we name our alkane, the last part of our name for the alkane should refer to this carbon backbone. So that means we'll have a pentane. Now we're not done with naming this molecule. We'll come back to it after rule number two. So pent means five, ane means it's an alkane. So let's come up with a second uh, alkane. So now let's suppose we have um, the following. So let's say we have one more carbon. So let's begin naming in the same manner. So one, two, three. Now we want to go this way. Why? Well, because if we go this way, we'll end at four. If we go this way, we'll end at six. Five, uh, four, five, and six. So once again, our longest carbon backbone has six, so that means we write hexane. Hex simply means six, and ane means it's an alkane. So let's get another um, alkane in. So let's say we have, um, I don't know, this one, okay? So let's say we have the following alkane. So once again, let's begin labeling our carbons, numbering our carbons. So one carbon, two, three, four, if we go up, we end at six. If we go sideways, we end at seven. So we choose sideways. So our longest carbon backbone has seven carbons, and so we name it heptane. Hept means seven, ane means alkane. Now, once again, we're not done naming these guys. We'll come back to these guys after rule number two. So let's, so let's look at rule number two. In substituted alkanes, the substituent is given a number based on the position on that carbon backbone. And the number value should be as low as possible. So let's go to example number one. So our substituent is this methyl group. Now if we start from this side, we go one, two, three. So our methyl is on the third position of the carbon backbone. If we start from this side, it's also on the third. So this has symmetry. And so we simply write three dash methyl pentane. Example number two. Now in this one, it's a bit more tricky because this doesn't have symmetry the, the same way that this one has. So if we begin on this side of our backbone, we go one, two, three. If we begin on that side, we get one, two, three, four. So remember, we want the lowest possible number, so we should start from this way. And that's exactly why I began labeling on this side of the chain of carbons. So, since we have a methyl group, we have three methyl hexane. And finally, the last example, this, like this one, also has symmetry down the middle. It doesn't matter if we begin here or here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we write four, but now we have not a methyl, but an ethyl, because we have two carbons. So that concludes these examples. 
Let's go to these two examples. So once again, according to rule number one, we want to find the longest chain of carbon. So we can either have one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. Now we want the lowest value for our substituent, so we begin here. One, two, three, four. So just a one, two, three, four and let's name them. Now since it has four carbons, that means our backbone is butane. So we have butane for the backbone. And then our second position, position two, is a bromine. So we name it bromo. Bromo is short for bromine. Now, let's look at the second one. Once again, this has symmetry. It doesn't matter if we begin here or here. So, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Either way, this is the fourth position on our carbon backbone. So, let's begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So, it's a heptane, and it's a four position substituted. So, that means four chloro heptane. Four chloro Okay, let's go to uh, rule number three. In multi-substituted alkanes, substituents are ordered alphabetically, and identical substituents receive prefix di, tri, tetra, etc. So, let's look at the last three examples. So once again, we have to keep these two rules in mind. Our first goal is to find the longest straight chain of carbon. So, one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, six. So, we choose to go this way. And remember, since we have two substituents, we have a bromo and a methyl, we want to follow an alphabetical rule. So that means since B comes before M, we have to start this way. So one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have a hexane. So our backbone is hexane. And we have three bromo. and 4-methyl. Well, I'm not going to have room, but this is, this should be methyl. Okay, let's go to this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4. Which way do we go? Well, once again, we want the alphabetical rule. So, since B comes before C, that means we start here. So let's start on that side. We have one, two, three, four. And so we're going to have um, two bromo, uh, three chloro, and then since we have a four chain carbon backbone, we have butane. Okay, so now let's look at the final molecule. In this final molecule, we have two identical substituents, and that means we're going to want to use the di prefix. So this is a third butyl substituent. So let's find our longest straight chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that means we're going to have an octane. So let's label. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that means we're going to have an octane carbon backbone and we're going to have di, so di meaning two, tert butyl octane. And notice this is not done because we want to actually label on which carbon are our two substituents are located. So four and five. So that means we're going to have four, five, di, tert, butyl, octane. 